Hello and welcome to Health 360 Plus. Today we are commemorating World Health Day. And what better a day than today to talk about the most difficult lifestyle, health, slash social, slash economic problems that India is facing. Courtesy lifestyle diseases and non-communicable diseases, India is going to be facing a pandemic of sorts in years to come. And most doctors agree that this is a situation that we need to deal with on a war footing, but are we doing it? Is there enough effort to educate people about lifestyle, non-communicable diseases? Is there enough understanding of lifestyle diseases? That's the big question. Joining me today is Dr. Naresh Trihan, the Managing Director, Vedanta Hospital. Thank you so much for your time, Dr. Trihan. How big a problem, Dr. Trihan, do you think is the growing burden of non-communicable slash lifestyle diseases in India, which already has a huge population of patients suffering from diabetes and obesity? So, you know, in India, unfortunately, we have what we call a double whammy. Mm. That on one hand, we have not been able to eliminate the communicable diseases completely. So there is a big burden of that. And on top of that, now the emerging lifestyle diseases, what we call non-communicable diseases, but actually consists basically of, uh, of life-threatening diseases like heart disease, cancer, diabetes. So what we are talking about is today that how if we are to look at a healthy India in times to come, mm. what should be the blueprint for achieving that? So on one hand, what we are saying is we must have a full target like the Prime Minister has announced that in, by 2025, we should try to eliminate TB from India. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the WHO goal is 2030. So this kind of, we have had a lot of success also, like we eliminated polio, smallpox, malaria, is, and malaria and TB are the two main problems that we are facing today. So we must mm -hmm. put them on the side very quickly. On the other side, if you look at the lifestyle diseases, they actually give you a warning sign. Mm. You know that your 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 uh, 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 your history will tell you whether you are at a high risk of developing diabetes or heart disease. Mm -hmm. So, if you know your genes, so this is what we say: know your genes. That in your family, if you have heart disease, if one parent has heart disease, then your chances of having heart disease is double that of normal, that means 20-25%, because normally it's 10-12% to for the Indian population. Now, if God forbid both parents have it, then it's actually even, even as close to 40-50%. So, mm. if that is so, the first thing you need to do is to get your risk factors checked. <clears throat> so, we say by the year, age of 20, you should have your first checkup where we can tell how many risk factors you have. Right. You know, uh, that brings me to my <coughs> next question on preventive uh, health care. Uh, the tendency, and this is uh, very common amongst the people that I see around me, for example, also, and you could add to that, is that many people don't want to get don't want to get any preventive health checkup done until there is a problem or until some situation demands it. Do you think that's a huge concern here? And there is a lot more that the government must do to incentivize preventive health checkups. So, as I was saying, hmm. except for cancer, most lifestyle diseases can be managed you very well if you know that you're getting them. So, I'll give you an example. What do we, why do we recommend that for everyone who has risk factors in the family, genetic risk factors should have a checkup by 20 years of age. And if normally you you are you are otherwise not aware of any risk factors in your family, at least by 25, latest by 30 years of age, all your risk mm -hmm. factors should be mapped. And it's a very simple executive check that needs. And we want to check for heart disease, for high blood, high blood pressure, diabetes, any other abnormality in your blood like hyperlipidemia and all that. So all this can be checked and you can be warned because it is preventable. Now, if a person wants to be careless and not care about it, then there's very little the doctors or the government or the society can do for that person. But there is enough data, there is enough warning to say, who are the people who are at risk of developing? Obesity is a big problem today. If you're obese, you know you're obese. It's not a secret. So you know that your risk factors will be much higher. Your chances of developing diabetes, heart disease, cancer, 
and other joint diseases and all is very high. So if you are that way, please go get yourself checked out and follow the advice given to you because these are all preventable. You can hmm. stop them from developing further with a little bit of effort. With a little bit of effort and that's what I want to talk to you about. Uh, Dr. Trihan, you mentioned diabetes and obesity and one thing linked to that is our consumption of highly processed foods uh, in India, like in many other parts of the world as well. But because we're talking about our country, there is a general lack of awareness about what these foods can do to you in the longer run and to your children. It's just so normal to see a little child have a big pack of chips. When do you see people around you like that? Does this upset you that there is very little awareness about the harmful impact of processed food or food in packets? And in this direction, there needs to be a lot more work done by the food uh, <clears throat> safety and uh, authority in the country. You know, it's public education. What we call yes. basically yes. public health is a very big issue today. And a very large part of it is educating the public about what is hazardous to their health. Hmm including today. I mean, the environment, of course, is very important where your pollution will create all sorts of problems, including uh, neurological problems, including cancer, including all the other problems that can happen. So you need to understand what the environment is doing to you, what food is doing to you, yeah. and what alcohol is doing to you. If you know all this stuff, or if you are informed of it, People have a tendency still to bury their head in the sand because they want mm. to enjoy life, quote unquote, which is not enjoying if you're getting obese. It's basically you're making yourself, your own self sick. But, you know, that also leads to a very important point of mental health. Why do people not understand uh, or absorb the fact and practice it that you know very well that there are hazards in, say, tobacco, tobacco in whatever form, whether it is smoked, whether it is chewed, is one of the most hazardous things. But people still do it. Mm. You talk about eating fatty food, and like you said, your people, if you look at people's plates, they will go on, on, the, uh, on the table, they'll go for the fatty stuff. Mm. Because of the fact that your brain has been programmed like that. Salt taste is triggers hunger in you. So you, if you once you start open a pack of chips, you will not stop till you finish it because you can't. So that's why that's why it, we, this processed food, this uh, trans fat uh, laden uh, food or high sodium food, they're all addictive because of the fact that there is that element in them that they have studied what will stimulate your brain to want more and more. Well, and that's the, that's the thing. So we yeah. need to not only not only educate the public, but we also need to put regulation in place that when mm -hmm. a particular food crosses a certain hazard point, we should then uh, stop it or ban it. I don't. I don't believe in banning, but at least mm -hmm. uh, put it on a on a alert list to the public so that they know that this is what is going to cause them more problems than if you if they had mm -hmm. food which is not so rich in sodium and all that. Absolutely. You know, uh, Dr. Trihan in urban India, a lot of people know that, you know, just, just uh, finishing a pack of chips, for example, is not healthy. But my concern and my problem is so much among the uneducated people uh, who are not thinking twice or even those in rural India where the markets uh, have grown as far as the business of selling a pack of chips or a pack of biscuits uh, to the rural population is concerned. So if there are big packs here, there are smaller, cheaper packs in our villages. And they don't know. They they perhaps think that a pack of biscuits is perhaps an alternative to, you know, good old roti and sapsi, which isn't. And that's where the problem is. Don't you think so? It is, most definitely. Mm -hmm. But, you know, fortunately, TV today has a, a very far-reaching ability of educating people. Hmm. So I think that also like the the media can also take on this as a social uh, uh, sort of responsibility to actually educate the people in between your programs and all that so that people should understand that one thing is important and that is human nature. 
that when you repeat something again and again and again, it begins to sound like truth. Mm. So it's, it, it is incessant that we need to keep that effort. The government, of course, has the primary responsibility. The medical profession has a huge responsibility towards this. And so does the media, because you can reach millions of people in, mm. uh, at, at the snap of a, of a button, whereas it will take us years for medical practitioners to go around the country and preaching. So I think that it's a combination of these three elements that if we can put into our society, we can make a dent into the disease pattern of India. And uh, I think uh, that is one part of only one, awareness is only one part. The other downstream parts, which is, you know, if you look at the health stack that the government has made today, <clears throat> starting with the wellness center, and for every five villages, there will be a, a wellness center, which is easily accessible. So not only do we, are you using those centers also for educating the community, but also detecting very early signs of problems. So if you can detect very early that you are you're maybe getting high blood sugar or high blood pressure or your cholesterol is climbing, all these things can be detected by simple blood tests which are not even that expensive anymore. So if we can do that, and people can access that wellness center for their preventive checkup and early signs of any disease that they may be getting, whether there is coughing, fever, uh, rashes, you know, some of the things that were abdominal pain, if they go and seek help, we can help them at a very early stage in the disease and actually decrease the disease burden hugely. It's only when we keep ignoring some symptom that we have until it becomes serious and then panic, that's where we have lost the plot already. Uh, Dr. Trihan, uh, my last question to you has got to do with the other problem that we are facing and maybe not talked about now as much as we should. But in days and weeks and years to come, this is going to be a huge concern. Uh, if it, it isn't already in India, it's it's got to do with your mental health. Uh, the pandemic has just made things so difficult for everyone. And if there was a problem, which there was, it's only amplified in the last few years or so. How big is this concern as far as depression is concerned, awareness, the stigma around it, the kind of work that needs to be done to acknowledge that there is a problem and that it is treatable, not just by medicine, but by lifestyle changes? So, you know, in our mm. culture, in our society, mm. Very little currency has been placed on mental health. We are, we, in a way, we had a support system in our joint families, in our close-knit families. Mm -hmm. It was there, no, no, no question. But ever since society has become mobile, where we, you know, the families have actually been thrown apart by, by the necessity of work, by, mm -hmm. by uh, travel, by whatever, that Secure security has, has disappeared by and large. The second thing is that there is a lot of damage digital and web is doing to the human mind. Hmm. Because if you see, you don't need a friend anymore. You just, your friend is your phone. Hmm. I mean, people traveling anywhere, the car, you know, somewhere, they're always absorbed in this. So what is happening is, that it is disconnecting you from human relationship and human interaction. So today we have a big problem because we are now, you know, we used to talk about de-addiction meant alcohol, drugs, smoking. That's the de-addiction, the, the traditional de-addiction uh, program. Today we are talking about de-addiction from, from web and digital, where people have started communicating only on, uh, on WhatsApp. I mean, uh, there, is a, there is a very interesting, just the document, a short film made, it's known as Reboot, where, where a person, a mother asks the son, what will you have for dinner? He says, I'll, I'll text you, ma. So he's texting what he wants to eat. I mean, you can't even talk to your mother. So these are the kind of things that we have to watch out for. These are the new diseases that are consequential of our society moving at the speed of lightning. And now you know, you know, now you know GPT, chat GPT, GPT-3, GPT-4, where we are now recognizing that there is a lot of danger in it also. So mm. with this fast changing environment, we need also to move our education system, our awareness system, our exposure 
for for people at the same speed otherwise there'll always be a gap will become wider and wider so i think what you have, what you have alluded to about mental health had not being the priority in our country today i think we we need to move towards it asap and also recognize the parents the public the society has to be educated to recognize the the signs of mental addiction or depression or or, or you know you can tell you can tell but people need to be informed so absolutely i think absolutely. that's that's the lead of the day and if we are talking about on world health day we need to talk about the population of the world specific diseases yes but also the larger format okay all right dr trihan thank you so much for joining us for connecting and sharing your views with us on this important and special occasion of world health day where we get this opportunity to talk about the fact that india is not facing the traditional problems that we've been doing so for years like obesity and diabetes but there are newer health challenges including mental health and also addiction to devices like dr trihan touched upon thank you so much for connecting dr trihan thank you viewers for joining us thank you thank you sir